few guys decided to pursue our passion as we hit destination fishing spots in our local waters out of Pompano Beach, Florida. We want to fill you in on what we have learned along the way. What's up guys, Johnny here from Johnny Jigs. Today we're gonna to dig into how to tie a set of assist hooks. Uh, a lot of people come into the store and they veer away from you know, buying our, our assist hooks with the cord because they just don't wanna dig into tying their own. And I think a lot of people don't realize how easy it is. So today I'm gonna to dig into that and show you guys how to tie your own assist hooks. And the hooks that I'm gonna to tie today um, are gonna be the ones that I'm using out on the American Patriot later this week. And just to give you guys a little heads up, we are uh, going on the American Patriot on a trip that goes to uh, what we call the other side or the Canaveral buoy. And our main target this week is gonna be for yellowfin tuna, uh, as well as, you know, we can get into sailfish, wahoo, there's even a chance of getting a bluefin tuna there as well. So we're super excited about this trip and I will leave a link below on how you can book your trip and go out fishing with us on the American Patriot. So without further ado, let's dig into how to tie an assist hook. All right guys, so we're gonna start out, I'm using the Hytina Kevlar Core, that's what the KC stands for there. 320 pound test. Um, this is the blue one, they have it in orange and, and a few other colors, but we usually carry the uh, blue and the orange here at Johnny Jigs. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna measure out seven and a half inches. And that's a good starting point, you know, and as you dig further into to making your own assist hooks, you'll find out what lengths work best for you, but a good starting point for you would, would be the seven and a half inches. And it's, it's tough cord, these are gonna have some sharp, sharp uh, scissors and stuff to cut them. But seven and a half inches is a great starting point. Um, to tie an assist hook for many, many size jigs. And we're gonna take this cord and we're gonna run it through the top of the eye on the assist hook. And I like hooks that have the eye bent back a little bit, and that way whenever you finish the hook, it actually gives you a nice uh, straight um, um, presentation on it. You know, you're not, you're not moving the hook this way or this way, it goes straight with the cord is what I'm looking for. So you're gonna go right through the top hole, you're gonna pull out a pretty good amount of line on the end. That way you can tie your knot and then you're gonna do a loop in it, just like so. So all I did was make a loop. I went through the eye, I made a loop. And now the loop that I made, I'm gonna go around the hook and through the loop. You could do it two times, I like to do it three times. So that's one. And then here's the second one and it gets a little, it gets a little weird when you got big hands. And then here's the third one right there. So I like to hold on to the tag end right here and just kind of pull it tight, so semi-tight around the shank of the hook and that way it's ready to go. And I like to straighten it out, make sure that everything is, is you know, laying on top of each other properly before I, before I pull it tight. And that's a good start right there. So now we're gonna move on to our second hook. And here's the trick with this one is it's the same deal that you go through the eye on the top just like that. But what I like to do is actually make it to where the hooks are facing this direction. So they're both pointing towards each other whenever you do this second hook. Um, it's not critical that you do that because you can move them around as you go, but that's what I like to do and it, it seems to end up uh, better for me in the end. So I'm doing the same deal. I just made the loop just like that and I'm gonna go one. Second one's always harder because you tend to run out of line on it. So one, and then two, and then the last one, which will be three, right there. I may have lost one, nope, we're good. So I'll pull it tight on the shank and then pull it right up to it. So you can see that, that they're facing the same direction. So if you point them at each other, the, the points are gonna are hit each other. Next thing is, I just use an old jig that has a, uh, has a nice uh, connection point on it so I can get my hook through it. And then I'll use a pair of pliers on the other side. And you're gonna wanna give this a good 
snug tight you can kind of see that all grabbing in there and, and the idea is you pull on this as much as a you know 70 pound black grouper would and that way the uh you know that if you hook into one you're good to go now this is the tricky part that a lot of people miss and what i notice um whenever people put their solid rings on they're they're missing a step and not that the other way won't work and i'm going to show you both ways but really this way is is what i found to be the best way and i'll explain to you why as soon as i can get one of these solid rings out of here so that's a johnny jig solid ring you could pick this up online or you can get it in our store um, it's relatively uh cheap and uh they work well so what i do is i point the hooks towards each other and i pinch it right at the tip right there right and then you lay the solid ring on top. Most people will just go over the top and pull the solid ring right there and then they're done. But what happens is if it gets cut at this point right here, then the solid ring will just pull off and you lose both hooks. So what I like to do is I come down like that, I'll pinch it in between my fingers. You go, you go over the top of the solid ring just like that, right? So I went over the top and I pinched it right there. And then where you have this loop in the back, you give it a twist and go back over the top of the solid ring and then pull it tight. And what that's doing is it's giving you an additional knot around your two loops that are on the solid ring right there. And then I'll take my old jig, loop it over the top there, grab onto the solid ring and give it a nice tight pull on there and the idea is that once you've done that and pulled it tight when you let go the hooks will do that they they point at each other now this is this is all in theory but if a fish was to attack your jig and get the hooks in its mouth then the hooks essentially would do that uh, giving you two penetration in the fish's mouth or double your chances of a hookup. And this, my friend, is definitely a reliable uh, set of assist hooks. And this is something that I fish all the time. So you'll, you'll see in a lot of our videos, if you look at my hooks, that's exactly what I'm using. Um, now I might mess with the lengths a little bit just to adjust to a jig length or, you know, if it's a shorter jig, um, obviously I want to shorten the hooks if I can. But this is definitely a dynamite setup and it'll work well for you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You could also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And most importantly, jig on.